Hi, the video you are about to watch may contain uh, scenes and scenarios and language of a very adult nature. So if you are under the age of 18, please leave my room and please uh, watch one of my other videos. In other words, viewer discretion is advised. Okay, now that the kids are gone, hey, what is up? This is Couch Potato Mike coming to you from the book club once again to bring you chapter 20 of Freed by E.L. James. Uh, I've been having some fun with this. Uh, it's been a pretty good book so far. Pretty good book. And I've been getting a lot of nice feedback on these videos. I'm glad you guys are enjoying them. My microphones decide to go all spinny-roo on me. All right. So I uh, just want to remind you guys, as always, please subscribe because I am striving to get to 300 subs. Actually, I'm striving to get to 1,000 subs. But one step at a time, guys. Just one step at a time. So we're almost to the halfway mark. Mark. And I'm trying to get to 300 subs by August the 8th. So help me out there. And uh, you can also help me out by subscribing, by sharing, by giving me a thumbs up. Because it helps out with that YouTube algorithm. And uh, ring the bell so you know when I'm uh, going to be putting out another one of these. I said all of these as premieres if you haven't guessed by now. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into this. This is Chapter 20, a.k.a. Saturday, August the 20th of 2011. Through the lens, I watched my wife sleep soundly at last. Earlier, Anna was talking, begging someone in her dreams not to go. I wondered who. Me? Where would I go without her? She's been plagued by nightmares since the arson at Grey House was confirmed. She's even taken to sucking her thumb on the odd occasion while she sleeps. I wonder if it might have been better for us to fly home earlier, but I was reluctant to leave the tranquility of the fair lady. And so was Anna. And, at, la at least, I've been able to comfort her after her night terrors, hold her, soothe her, like she holds me when I have mine. We have to catch this asshole. How dare he or she frighten my wife? I've taken my father's advice and we're flying commercial. It's been a while for me, but Anna has never flown international first class, so it'll be a new experience for her. We're leaving out of London and have grounded the jet in Nice until it's had a thorough inspection. I'm not taking any chances, not with my crew and not with my wife. Apart from the nightmares, the remaining days of our honeymoon have been blissful. Reading, eating, swimming, sunbathing on board, making love. These have been magical days. There's just one more activity I want to do before we go. I push the shutter and hope that the sounds won't wake her. The camera's been a welcome gift and I've rediscovered my passion for photography. We're in such a splendid, photogenic setting after all. The fair lady is yar. Anna stirs and stretches her hand out to my side of the bed, looking for me. The gesture warms my heart. I'm not far away, baby. She opens her eyes, startled, I think, so I put the camera on the floor and quickly lie down beside her. Hey, don't panic. Everything's fine, I whisper. I hate her wary look. I push her hair off her face. You've been so jumpy these last couple of days. I'm okay, Christian, she lies. Her forced smile is for my sake. Were you watching me sleep? Yes, you were talking. Oh, her eyes widen. You're worried. I kiss the soft spot above her nose and try to reassure her. When you frown, a little V forms just here. It's soft to kiss. Don't worry, baby. I'll look after you. It's not me I'm worried about. It's you, she grumbles. Who's looking after you? I'm big enough and ugly enough to look after myself. Come, get up. There's one thing I'd like to do before we head home something fun. I slap her ass and I'm rewarded with a gratifying squeal. I bound off the bed and she follows. Shower later. Put on your swimsuit. Okay. The crew have lowered the jet ski into the water. My life vest is on and I'm helping Anna into hers. I strap the ignition key and kill the cor and the kill cord to her wrist. You want me to drive? She asks incredulous. Yes, I grin. That's not too tight. That's not too tight. It's fine. Is that why you're wearing a life jacket? She arches a brow unimpressed. Yes. Such confidence in my driving capabilities, Mr. Gray. As ever, Mrs. Gray. Well, don't lecture me, she warns, and I know she's talking from bitter experience. I hold up my palms and surrender. Would I dare? Yes, you would, and yes, you do, and we can't pull over and argue on the sidewalk here. Fair point well made, Mrs. Gray. Are we going to, uh, 
Are we going to stand on this platform all day debating your driving skills, or are we going to go have some fun? Fair point well made, Mr. Gray. She climbs onto the craft, and I slide on behind her and look up to find we've attached a small, attracted a small audience on deck. The crew, our French security, and Taylor. I kick us away from the small pontoon and wrap my arms and clamp my thighs around Anna. She inserts the ignition key, presses the start button, and the engine powers to life in a gusty roar. Ready? She shouts. As I'll ever be. Slowly, she opens up the accelerator and the jet ski glides away from the ship. Steady, Anna. I tighten my hold on her as Anna increases our speed and we shoot across the water. Whoa! I shout, but it doesn't stop her. She leans forward, taking me with her and speeds toward the open sea, then veers toward the shore where the runway at Nice Airport juts out into the Mediterranean. Next time we do this, we'll have two jet skis, I shout. That would be fun, racing together. Anna soars across the waves. We bounce a little as it's choppier on the water today with a brisk summer breeze. As she nears the shore, a plane flies overhead. The noise is deafening. Shit! Anna swerves suddenly. I shout, but I'm too late and we're both bucked off the craft and into the Mediterranean. The water closes over my head, into my eyes and my mouth, but I kick up and surface immediately, shaking my head and looking for Anna. The jet ski bobs, lifeless and harmless, not far from us, and Anna is wiping the water from her eyes. I swim toward her, relieved she surfaced. You okay? I ask when I get close. Yes, she croaks, and she's grinning from ear to ear. Why is she smiling? She just catapulted us into the cold sea. I pull her into my wet embrace and hold her face between my palms, checking to see if she wasn't hit by the jet ski. See? That wasn't so bad. She gushes, and I know she's okay. No, I guess it wasn't, except I'm wet. I'm wet, too. I like you wet, I leer at her. Christian, she admonishes me for my lewd look, and I can't help myself. I kiss her. No, I consume her. We're both winded when I pull away. Come, let's head back. We have to shower. I'll drive. I swim over to the jet ski, vault onto it, and pull her up behind me. Was that fun, Mrs. Gray? It was. Thank you. No, thank you. Shall we go home now? Yes, please. Anastasia is sipping champagne and reading off her iPad as we sit in the Concord Lounge at Heathrow and wait for our connecting flight to Seattle. This is one of the things I loathe about traveling on a scheduled flight, the waiting. But Anna seems happy enough. Occasionally, from the corner of my eye, I notice her surreptitious glances in my direction. Inside, I'm dancing. I love that she's watching me. I'm reading the Financial Times. It makes for sober reading that global markets are still skittish in the wake of the recent budget deficit issues and Black Monday. The dollar is sinking. Also, there's an article on whether the rich should pay more tax. Warren Buffett seems to think we should, and maybe he's right. Anna takes a photograph, with the flash on, surprising me. I blink the blur of bright lights out of my eyes and watch as she switches off the flash. How are you, Mrs. Gray? I ask. Sad to be going home, she pouts. I like having you to myself. I take her hand and kiss her knuckles in turn. Me too, I whisper. But, she asks. Damn, she heard my unspoken doubt. Her eyes narrow, shrewd and inter interrogative. She's not going to let this go until I tell her. I sigh. I want this arsonist caught and out of our lives. Oh, Exactly. I'll have Welch's balls on a platter if he lets anything like this happen again. My tone sounds cold and sinister, even to me. But this has gone on too long. We need to catch the fucker. Anna gapes at me, then raises the camera and takes a quick shot. Gotcha! I smile, relieved that she's lightening the mood. I think it's time to board our flight. Come. Sawyer, can we go through the front? I ask as he pulls the Audi up to the curb outside of Scala. Taylor climbs out and opens my door. Anna is fast asleep. Thanks, Taylor, I say as I stretch my legs. It's good to be back. It is, sir. I'll wake Anna. Opening her door, I lean over her. Hey, sleepyhead, we're home. I unbuckle her seatbelt. Hmm, she hums, and I lift her into my arms. Hey, I can walk. 
she grumbles sleepily. Oh no, baby. I need to carry you over the threshold. She puts her arms around my neck. Up all 30 floors? Mrs. Gray, I am very pleased to announce that you've put on some weight. What? So if you don't mind, we'll use the elevator. Taylor opens the door to the Escala lobby and smiles. Welcome home, Mr. Gray. Mrs. Gray. Thanks, Taylor. I answer. We head into the lobby. What do you mean I've put on weight? Anna glares at me. She's pissed. Not much, I grin to reassure her. Tightening my hold on her as I walk to the elevator, I recall how she looked when I picked her up from SIP after we, after we split up. How thin and sad she was. The memory is sobering. What is it, she asks. You put on some of the weight you lost when you left me. My answer is quiet. That was me. I was responsible for her sadness. I never want to see her like that again. I press the call button. Hey, Anna caresses my face and her fingers entwine in my hair. If I hadn't gone, would you be standing here like this now? And just like that, she pours oil on my troubled waters. No, I smile, because it's true. I step into the elevator, holding my wife and lightly brush my lips over hers. No, Mrs. Gray, I wouldn't. But I wouldn't but I would know that I could keep you safe because you wouldn't defy me. I like defying you, she says with her coquettish smile. I chuckle. I know. And it's made me so happy. Even though I'm fat, she pouts. I laugh. Even though you're fat. My lips capture hers once more and she tightens her hold on my hair as we lose ourselves in each other. The elevator pings and we are back at Escala for the first time as husband and wife. Very happy, I whisper, my body stirring. I carry her into the foyer, and I want to bypass everything and everyone and take her to bed. Welcome home, Mrs. Gray. I kiss her once more. Welcome home, Mr. Gray. Her face is alight with joy. I carry her into the main living room and set her down on the kitchen island. From the cupboard, I take down two champagne flutes, and from the fridge, I retrieve a chilled bottle of Grand Anne Boulanger, our favorite rosé. Opening the bottle with a quick twist of the cork, I pour the pale pink sparkling liquid into each glass. I hand one to Anna, who's still sitting on the counter, and stand between her legs. Here's to us, Mrs. Gray. To us, Mr. Gray, she answers with a shy smile. We, we clink glasses and each take a sip. I know you're tired, I run my nose against hers, but I'd really like to go to bed and not to sleep. I kiss the corner of her sweet mouth. It is our first night back here, and you're really mine. She moans, closes her eyes, and raises her head, giving me access to her throat. Anna, you goddess. My love, my life, my wife. I know, guys, that was a much shorter chapter than the last two or three, but I'm kind of glad for the shorter chapters. They keep me from going hoarse. I hope you guys have uh, really been enjoying this, and if you have any thoughts on... Uh, this particular chapter, even though it was short, let me know down in the comments section below. Anything else you want to say, put it down in the comments section right below. You have a suggestion for my next book, put it in the comments section down below. Anything else? Comment section down below. So that is going to do it for this episode. So stay tuned. The next episode will be out within a day or two depending on how much of life gets in the way. So for the Couch Potato Mike YouTube channel, this is Couch Potato Mike reminding you that in the end, we're all stories. So let's make them good ones. See you next time, guys.